your agenda. With gas prices staying relatively low, the full-size body-on-frame SUV continues to barrel down American highways. After taking a year off, the Nissan Armada returns in 2017, now based on the Infiniti QX80, what the rest of the world calls the Nissan Patrol, as opposed to previous years when it was based on the Nissan Titan. And the similarities aren't just in the skeleton, either. With a few caveats, you're essentially getting Infiniti quality for Nissan money, and that's not a bad deal. These vents, they're functional, by the way. Now, the major issues with large body on frame SUVs are usually the ride and the fuel economy. The ride being a result of everyone being spoiled by unibodied crossovers delivering car like handling with SUV utility, and so everyone's expectations have changed very drastically in the last 15 years. But things here in the Armada are nowhere near as jumpy and juddery as you'd expect. I mean, the Yukon XL Denali I had a few weeks back, that would pogo all over the place on the highway. And even the unibody Durango I had just last week was a bit busy with its sport suspension, but here things are really composed. I mean, even to the point of being a little floaty and boaty, if I'm, if I'm being honest. So that's the good news. The bad news is the fuel economy is pretty atrocious. This has got a 5.6 liter V8 offering nearly 400 horsepower and torque and EPA estimates are at 15 miles per gallon combined here in the all wheel drive configuration. That's 13 city and 18 highway. As is usually the case, real world estimates are just far worse. Over my week with the Armada, I've gotten closer to 11 combined. Now, granted, if you go with the rear wheel drive option that's standard, You'll gain one mile per gallon in all categories, but that's still a pretty poor performance at the pump. Plus, the Yukon, Tahoe, and the Expedition, they all get two miles per gallon better in all categories, although arguably that's still not great. But that's what you get when you want to haul around up to eight people, tow up to 8,500 pounds, and have total storage of 95.4 cubic feet. Speaking of which, that storage figure slots the Armada right in the middle of the pack, Better than the Tahoe Yukon, but worse than the Sequoia or Expedition. Of course, at this point, the numbers really aren't as important as the space itself. The Armada has a lower liftover height than the Tahoe Yukon as well, which means you can more easily get your crap in the back. That's important, but it's still really high. Expedition and Sequoia went out here. Now, I mentioned that elsewhere in this big, beautiful world, the Infiniti QX80 upon which the Armada is based is called the Nissan Patrol. And I suspect that's what's lured a lot of you to watch this video. But here I've got some bad news. If you're expecting the off-road prowess of the Patrol, you're just going to be disappointed. The Armada doesn't get the off-road goodies that the Patrol gets, like the decoupling sway bars and the locking differentials or that hydraulic body motion control suspension. I mean, it doesn't even get the cross-link suspension from the Infiniti. What it does get is a softer American suspension tune. But that doesn't mean that it can't handle itself off-road. With nearly nine inches of ground clearance and a low-range gearing that locks torque 50-50 front and rear, it's no slouch. Now let's talk a little bit more about this engine and transmission. The 5.6 liter V8 here offers 70 extra horsepower and a few extra torque over the old mill. And with a new seven speed transmission, you're getting a couple of extra cogs too, but you're not really seeing much of a benefit at the pump for that. And that's really frustrating because there's more to be done here to make that situation better. I mean, here in the redesigned Armada, you're still getting a hydraulic steering assist system, which is something I normally love, but there's virtually no road feel here anyway, so why not just go with an electronic steering assist, like most cars have nowadays, and you could gain another mile per gallon or two. Despite all that extra power, the 2017's 8,500 pound maximum tow rating is 500 pound less than the 2015 Armadas, although that's still class leading. But it just doesn't feel very fast. I mean, the 6.5 second zero to 60 time 
is impressive, don't get me wrong, especially considering the Armada's 5,600 pound curb weight, but there's just a lot of noise and a long pause when you step on the gas before anything actually happens. I mean, you've really got to mash it in order to get any action here. Plus, sometimes on steep hills at slow speeds, the transmission starts jumping and juddering as it's trying to figure out which gear is best. And if I'm being honest, that's less than ideal. But the big upgrade here is visual. The Armada presents a really attractive facade. It's masculine and tank-like outside, and inside it's really clean and classy and quiet. They added acoustic glass for the windshield and the side windows, plus a lot of extra sound insulation throughout the cabin. There's a ton of fake wood trim and a lot of stitched leather. I mean, honestly, it looks and feels just as good as the Yukon XL Denali I tested a few weeks back, especially considering that the Armada Platinum's as-tested price is 20 grand less than the Denali, 61,000 versus 80. I mean, honestly, can you tell me a reason why I should spend $20,000 more on the Denali when the Armada can beat its maximum tow rating by 500 pounds? I can't. Okay, let me try to offer a couple of reasons. First, despite this being a full redesign, the Nissan Connect infotainment system is still the same old antiquated setup we've seen for a while now. And if you're hoping for Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, you're going to be disappointed. Really, I don't like this system very much. It's just not very intuitive. And as it gets up in years, the shortcomings are becoming less and less tolerable. Even functionally, it's hard to reach at times. I'd say it's the major disappointment of the entire vehicle. Also, these seats aren't very comfortable. Now, I don't know why I've had such a hard time with Nissan seats lately, but there's not a lot of support here and not enough adjustability either, which is strange because this has got six-way power here and a power tilt and telescoping steering wheel too, but I still can't seem to find a perfect position. It's even more frustrating because the QX80 gets eight-way power for the seat, but you know, I suppose you do have to decontent something. Otherwise, it's hard to see this as decontent. Auto LEDs, dual zone auto climate control, and Bose stereo are standards here and options for competitors. You get heated power seats, navigation, and a full size spare, all at the entry SV trim. I'd move up to the SL for the parking sensors and the top down 360 degree camera. This is a big vehicle, and you'll be happy to have them. I just wish the Platinum trim's blind spot system was standard as well. If you're expecting military levels of off-road prowess, then the Armada is not the tank for you. But if you're looking for class-leading towing and an attractive package at a deceptively low price, I think it'll fit the bill nicely. Meanwhile, give the Expedition and the Sequoia a test as well to see if their infotainment systems and lower load heights are enough of an upgrade to make you change your mind. And Nissan, please upgrade Nissan Connect. The Armada just deserves better. Hey, thanks for watching. If you want a full outline of the new Armada, just click the link in the description. You can head over to cargurus.com and read my full review. And subscribe to the channel for more reviews, like my test drive of the 2016 Yukon XL Denali.